These are some of the youngest self-made multi-millionaires in the world. What is the most you've made in one day? 40k profit. Multiple six figures in a day. And I wanted to find out what separated them from 99.9% .9 of all of their peers, starting in Dubai. Of course, man, in Dubai, you gotta enjoy it. This is Ecom Expert Samir. At age 16, he began dropshipping, and after his first year, he went from zero to 25k per month in profit. Today, he travels the world, making millions per month with his brand and stores. Welcome to the house, man. Well, out through the lift straight away. Straight away, man. Um, not even, there's no key card, you just go straight in. No need. This is the main part though, the view, absolutely beautiful. I've been in Dubai a couple times, but I haven't had a view like this, to be honest. And how much is it a night here? Uh, around 2K. Around 2K. 2K, but how much is the apartment worth? Around $10 million apartment. $10 million here. apartment? Yeah. As you do, as you do. I would say this is probably the second craziest Airbnb I've been in. Bigger one than this. Oh Bigger yeah. Oh yeah, because the thing is when you're friends with other people who do the same thing, if everyone around us is doing a couple hundred K profit months, like this is nothing. So these are my boys right here, all drop shippers. Always working, man, We're always working. That's the beautiful thing about it. How about I show you some of the stores? It's one of my brands here. So yesterday, we did around $30,000 yesterday on this brand. We go over to this month. So this, this brand month, did around 436K. We have around 11 team members. So this is another brand we have. Last 30 days, we did around 700K. Dropshipping is not dead, guys. All right, Samir. So my first question for you is, what is your story of you getting into the dropshipping business? Tried a lot of business models, agency. I was more keen on starting a marketing agency initially. It just made more sense at the time. With dropshipping, a lot of it is marketing. So I acquired the skill set through running a marketing agency for a bit. How old were you at this point when you started to try a marketing agency? Just turning 15. What was the initial drive to want to start making money online? You know, it, it came from my dad. So my dad was a small business owner that came to the U.S. when he was very young. My family is from Pakistan. They came to the U.S. with little to no money. Seeing him work very hard kind of motivated me at a young age to get into this game. You did your marketing agency. Did that work? Not at all. So this was just a young kid, 15, going to these shops, trying to get them to pay me, basically. Then you started doing dropshipping. Do you remember the first product that you ran? The first attempt to at dropshipping was a SpongeBob phone case that I ran off <laughs> meme pages. And I spent, I want to say 200 to 250, if I can recall, on meme pages and brought back nothing. And how many times did you try products before you finally had one that turned a profit? The first 30 products I tested didn't work. Wow, you did 30 products and they all flopped. It's, comm it's, it's commendable, bro. It's commendable. Well done. You stuck to it. You stuck to the game. You know, uh, after school, I would just, I wouldn't hang out with people. I wouldn't do anything like that. I would just test products. It, it just became like, like routine, like brushing my teeth. When the first product hit, I wasn't ready for it. And what was that first winning product? It was a electric lighter. How much money did you make with that first product? Entirely, like throughout the whole process of the brand, a little bit over a quarter million in profit. The brand is called avantlights.com, so you guys can look it up. From what I understand in dropshipping, a lot of people will, you know, find a product, make a little website, sell it, and then once it dies, it dies, go on to the next. Is that what you do? Very different, it's very different. For those eight months that I was trying dropshipping, it didn't work. It wasn't until I went with a more branded approach, I started to see success. So the issue with dropshipping is it logically doesn't make sense. Why would someone buy it from your shitty general store? You have to create a brand community and culture around your website and product for people to actually buy. So with Avant Lights, I didn't just say buy my electric lighter, I said buy the Avant Light. Similar to how fashion brands make a community and culture around something, you're doing it with these products on like small niche levels. 100%. Some of my best products were just like rocks. We would sell rocks. You sold rocks? Carnelian stones. We made over a million profit with Carnelian stones let's take it now you had your first winning product do you remember your first month 25k profit so you went from making nothing to 25k profit and that's why i love drop shipping you can go from zero to 100 very quickly and my dad was like yeah it's about time you stepped up like you know how brown parents are man how much are you making on a monthly basis right now 1.2 to 1.6 million a month right now is that rev or profit that's rev so profit will be anywhere between like close to 300k how did you bridge the gap in your understanding from the failing to a successful product. You build momentum at the beginning through belief. You get belief by looking at other people who have done what you want to do. But what got me pushing a lot at the beginning was when people said dropshipping was saturated, that got me fueled up because I changed perspective. I look at saturation as motivation that there's proof of concept. I wouldn't do an unsaturated business model because there's no one else making money from it. At this winning product, how old were you roughly? Around 16. Yeah. 16 years old. And did you continue to 
go to school and then eventually- Oh no, I dropped out of high school. You dropped out? I dropped straight out of high school. When was the first 100K month? It took me close to a year until I got to then 100K month. Because after 100K month, the snowball is very fast, right? So 100K month, 300K month is a very fast snowball. I hit 100K month with the stones I was talking about earlier, which were carnelian stones. First month we did like 97K, the second month was like 150K. Profit. With that brand, I actually had a mentor. Profits I made from Avant Lights, the first brand, I quickly put it into educating myself. What is the most you made in one day? 40K profit. 40K in one day. And that was off of, was that off multiple products or one product? That was multiple. What do you think has differentiated yourself in the dropshipping space? We live in a content economy. I made a switch a while ago to where I focused on having the best content and scaling the best content. You don't scale ads, you scale content. Once you make that switch, dropshipping does become a bit easier because when you focus on one thing, everything else just kind of comes into place. After our interview, we decided to switch things up a little bit and go for a little drive. Of course, man, in Dubai, you gotta enjoy it, man. You gotta enjoy it. Why not the Ferrari or a Porsche or... So I have a McLaren back in Tampa. I want to get the Evo. So I was like, let me just rent the Evo out here, see how it drives, see how I like it. I go back and I'll get the McLaren. Rip it, rip it. Samir, tell me, what is your advice for those young guys and girls who want to start making money online? Should they do drop shipping? Should they try something else? Even though I've made all my money in drop shipping, I'm going to be very honest with you guys and say that every business model works. My main advice is pick one thing and stick with it. A lot of people have the issue where they bounce between business models. How do they know what to pick though? Whatever makes sense to you. To me, dropshipping made the most sense because unlimited scalability, you can build a real business. It just made sense. The guys who want to do dropshipping, how should they start? First thing you guys need to understand is it's a game of branding. Don't go into it having a general store and testing a bunch of shit products. You need to be a sniper with your products. Pick products that sell a shortcut. Have you got any bits of final advice? Finding your why is one of the most important things you guys could do. You need to be emotional about your why. For me, it was freedom. I always wanted freedom. Being in school, working a job, these are things that, to me, I cringe when I think about it because you a lack of freedom. You guys need to find your why, whatever that be buying a mama house, taking care of your dad, being in nice cars, whatever your why is, feel it and be emotional about it and work towards it every day. I promise you it will work out. It will work out. Real quick guys, if you're a business owner looking to get more attention for your brand or business, check the first link in the description. Anyways, back to the video. And after our day with Samir, we are on to our second guest of the video. That's me, Jake. Awesome, bro. This is 22-year-old Jacob. At 16, he started secret reselling and eventually was able to sell thousands of pairs to the market, making a huge profit. Today, he's launched Surge Notify, the UK's biggest online money-making platform, and now he's moved to Dubai. All right, boom. So first of all, what we're gonna do? Quick house tour. Then we're gonna get it cracking with the interview. First of all, a bit about the house. I wasn't actually gonna move into Dubai and live here long term. I came in November, I was gonna stay just for the winter time, but then I was with my friends and I was like, why, why the f are you in the UK? So now we're in Dubai. It's very spacious though, it's quite, it's quite open. I didn't want nothing massive, like I didn't need anything extra special, like I'm right now, this year's a graph mode. It's a nice little chill spot. I see over here, you've got all the surge hats. Surge hats, the surge hat has to be done. PS5 there, which I ain't used once since I've been here. I don't think. If anybody wants that PS5, yeah, leave a comment, I'll give it to you. I swear, <laughs> I will. I swear I'll all give right, it to you. Right, you I heard say. that, you heard that, you heard that. Now we're going into the master bedroom where people say magic happens, but the magic doesn't happen here. We're just straight graph. TV, backside, just a normal bed. Workstation where the actual magic, magic happens. I'll be honest, I don't really give a shit about clothes. I just wear 50 pound cargoes. Since I started off being a reseller, I've got a crazy shoe collection where most of it is uh, in the UK, but I've got some crepes here that are cool. So, boom, UNC Jordan 1s, off whites. Then you have the off white Jordan 4s, which most of these I don't really wear, like I said, but I just like trainers. Like, I remember back a day when my mom be like, here, here's 50 pounds, pick the best shoes that you can have. My first question for you, Jacob, is what is your story of you getting into this and how your business operates? 16 of age, I started with reselling trainers. I was buying a bunch of trainers online, using bots and then going into the stores. I was getting ridiculous amount of trainers, 20 pairs, 30 pairs. And I was just paying people from college to come with me, wait in lines, clear out stores for the shoes. Before you got into sneaker reselling, yeah. 
were there any other business models you tried? You know about FIFA, innit? I used to be a FIFA guy. Packed Messi in one of them packs, bro. <laughs> and then I was just, you know the coins? Yeah, yeah. I was like, the games just came out. Yeah. I look on eBay, FIFA coins. Yeah. And they're like 100K is going for like a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. I sold all the coins. I made something like a grand. Wow, and you made 1K selling FIFA coins. Bro, I always had something in me where, how can I make money? I didn't really have a lot of money when I was growing up and all of that. So I've always had that mindset. If I want something, I need to go get it. I finished college, failed my A-levels, Photoshop my grades then i got a banking job with lloyd's bank what did you photoshop your grades from what to what in my a levels i done maths physics and graphics in maths i got a d physics i got a u and then graphics was the one that I did all right in. i got a c I went into the library photoshopped them a a a and then <laughs> boom and then that job done in it i was making probably another 1.5 to 2k from the job all the money that i was making from the job straight into the reselling side of things most of the people that followed me was through snapchat everybody was just messaging me saying like i want to get involved i want to do this i want to do that and that's when i first opened the group which is now known surge notify surge notify if people don't know what a cook group is you have your staff you have your providers they post stuff where you can buy it and resell that we're just posting in information people pay per month and we help them make money from reselling side of things is surge notify primarily a reselling place so at the you? start it was but now it's not and what year did you start that when i was 18 going into 19 i managed to get a few backdoors backdoors is like that you can pay them a little bit extra and you can clear all the stock so it's like behind doors so then i was getting like 50 pairs of trainers 100 pairs of trainers there's one picture i got like 100k pounds in jordan fours and then when i was buying all these trainers that's when crypto started popping off then i brought eth at like 400 pounds and i remember i was telling my friends like i'm buying eth we should all buy eth and then the eth investment went well made 30k from that 5k and that's where i invested into altcoins i made my first 100k so i'm doing basic research but i don't have the knowledge i have now i don't have the people i have now i don't have the millionaires that advise me in what i do right now even then i, I say i made 100k i lost like 60 70 percent of it because i kept thinking i'm gonna go to the moon like i'm thinking it's never gonna come i didn't understand cycles i didn't understand the bull market the bear market so then when the crash came uh and i lost most of the money that i made i was like shit need to go back to business and revise the stuff that i was working on and it was a humbling experience of you can make money fast but someone could, like you can just lose, lose it at the fast, same time yeah. having the experience on the first borings actually put me in a real real good position now like with my whole crypto stuff i've got a lot a lot of money invested in crypto did you give it like a rough ballpark just under seven figures i'll show this off camera yeah so this is right now yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of money. Of so just one of the accounts. It's not, not that much in there, but we've got some of the accounts there. So with Surge now, it's just Forex and crypto. What we offer right now is just signals, long-term investments, and then we run Surge EA, which is an expert advisor. So essentially, it's basically a bot that works on the funded accounts. It passively generates money and trades. It's like an AI trading bot. Kind of like that. If I just scroll through the success. So we did have a good week uh, this week. And you can see most of the people are on funded accounts. We had had a few like big payouts. You can see here, 12K, 12.8K. After our interview, we decided to take a look at Jacob's new wrapped track wall and go for a quick spin. Two. So before I talk about this car, like cars are like my passion. I've always been in fast cars since I started making money. Oh. And back in the UK, I've got like J82 M4. We can pop a picture right here. I got RS3, which I brought from the auction and E63, which got ripped off by my friend, but is what it is. But yeah, this is a Jeep track hawk, 6.2 V8 liter supercharged engine, 707 horsepower stock. And we're gonna send this sh to 1000. This is a big, it's a, it's a big fat booty bitch. It's, bro, it smokes Euruses, RSQ8s, all of that. If you've got earphones right now, just fucking take them up. I feel the heat. I feel, bro, they got oil on my hand. What the f? <laughs> Why you made me do that, bro? So, yeah, you were saying how you got to the buy but you're in work mode, you don't really want to do a bit. Yeah, I'm in that, like, you know, I'm here to, I'm here on like a business show. I'm here to film this video for you guys. But, um, Obviously enjoy your life here and there. But the thing is about enjoying life, you do need a good balance. But being young, like I'm only 22, right? People my age, when they start making money, maybe a bit younger, some like they come to Dubai, they get lost in the lifestyle. 
They make money, parties, this and that, girls, f all of that. You go into parties for what reason? I think it's bullshit. Yes, I've been to parties before when I was younger. You have to experience it once or twice, but it depends on your goals and all of that. All these people chasing parties, chasing the clubs, chasing the girls, bro. Find one good girl, stick with her. Like I'm 22, I'm grafting right now. I don't care about life, so none of that, bro. I want five kids by the time I'm 30. You know what I mean? Big family. I want a big ass family and I want to be able to provide, just live a good life. I need to ask, what advice are you going to give to the guys and girls at home? You need money to make money. The fastest way you can get some money is by getting a job. Go and get a job. I started off working at £4 an hour. Use that, put that money in. But I think the most important part is the mindset. A lot of people are not successful because they can't be disciplined. They're not self-accountable and they just don't put in the work. So mindset, if you have zero money, go get a job. Use that money to find a side hustle. And any parting advice? To Listen, leave my advice for you is stay disciplined. Bang out gym. If you're not disciplined, go to the gym because it's just going to put your mind in the right place and being able to work hard and all of that is just going to transition into business. Business is like the gym. You need to work hard every single day. Even if you don't want to go to the gym, you still need to work. That's the same as business. When you don't feel like doing work, you still get the work done. And that's what makes the difference between someone that wants to make some money and someone that wants to get f***ing rich because they're there every single day. No breaks, all gas. That's all breaks, no gas. All breaks, no gas. Just like this fat... Oh, I couldn't have one. <laughs> We're gonna come back to this video, few mil up, but we'll see you next year. Cut. See you boys in a bit. After a great day with Jacob, we are on to our final guest of the video. This is 20 year old Sean. At age 18, he started his own trading profit and generated over 50k in his first month. Today, he's expanded his business into three different firms, travels the world, and recently bought a matching G Wagon and Lambo. And now, onto Sean's crypto. So you come through, and then we've got on the left, we've got the kitchen, and now we've got the living area, and then a whole open plan you know, with the view outside. <laughs> there you go. Guys, are you seeing what we're seeing? So what made you want to move to Dubai? I came here on holiday with my ex-girlfriend. Honestly, I thought it was like paradise. I thought it was amazing. The people are so nice. I'm from Birmingham. If you know Birmingham, then you can see why it's a big contrast. And the network as well. That You go out, you meet so many people that are doing well for themselves and got their own businesses. Quality of life is just so much better here. And the weather is a bit better than Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Sean, tell us about your origin story. What was the beginning of all of this? It all kind of starts back when I was around maybe 14, 15 years old, when I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw one of these Forex gurus uh, with his Lamborghini and his nice cars and watches. And straight away as a teenager, like any other teenager, you know, you get obsessed and you think, this is what I want to do. I want to be this person in a way. The initial reason that you wanted to start learning about it is because you saw what somebody had online and you wanted that. Was it FOMO that got you going? It was FOMO, it was definitely FOMO. It was, I saw the lifestyle that they had and coming from a you know, normal background, background i wanted to do well for my family before you did forex or trading were there any other business models that you tried or was that the first one that you gave a go i actually got into website development um, when i was like 13 a few local businesses nothing crazy but due to that is where i am today because i was able to actually build my first website for my business when i finally launched when i was 18 years old all these little things that you do when you step out your comfort zone and you try to learn these new skills they can eventually help you to be in the position you are in the future so let's go back to you took your first course for trading how was that? This was before GCSEs, so I paid about £250. It wasn't very good, but it taught me the kind of basics. It taught me what a pip is and you know all the basics of trading. And then I actually found um, a YouTube channel of uh, someone called No Nonsense Forex. It's just a guy from America. He doesn't charge anything at all, but he has a whole playlist on like how to eventually become, I guess, like a, a profitable trader. And I was following that course for maybe like a year's time. And this is when I started to get into actually a quantity of analysis and machine learning and using machine learning to actually generate your own trading bots and I was doing that and I was generating my own bots with different um, algorithms and it has become profitable I actually started selling these bots I actually passed prop firm challenges in a way my dream was always to become a funded trader I actually managed to achieve this with one of the largest prop firms it was called FTM at the time and we've done this with one of the bots that I created it's only 50k account I actually passed it when I was 17 years old and I would actually go on to sell these bots in discord and I made a little bit of money from that I was making a few thousand pound a month just selling these bots at like 17 years old my kind of thing was there was a very limited the amount of prop firms at the time and they were very hard to get into and they had horrible rules and me and my partner at the time he had a bit of capital saved up because he was in uni so how much was your starting capital to start this prop firm probably close to around me five thousand um, dollars you started a prop firm with 5k 
I, look, I know this is a bit of a taboo subject. That is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, this was um, two and a half years ago. Now, there's a lot more like compliance, regulation. The barriers to entry were really low back then. Oh, so low. Right it's place, right more. time. I do always look back as like, I was quite lucky with that. 18 year old me, I contacted a broker that I knew was working with other prop firms. I was very surprised. They said, you know, all you need is to give us a deposit, which was only a few thousand. What were your requirements for the traders to pass? We actually had a two phase challenge that we started with. Our phase one was 6% and our phase two was only 4%, so 10% in total. This was crazy because at the time, the main people were FTMO. So their phase one is literally 10%. We were so much lower in price. Came to realize though, like long term, this model would not really be sustainable and profitable for the company. Three months in, we decided to make changes, increase the price and the profit target for the model to become more sustainable. You scaled this all up within your first firm. How long did the process take from starting the firm, signing the brokerage, and then to the point where, you know, it was now making five to six figures, six figures a month. I'm gonna be honest, the very first month that we launched, we turned over close to $50,000 in the- Wow, in yeah, the first in, month. In, in the first month, which is unheard of. And your margins are like basically 100%, right? Or- the Margins are very good at prop firms. I was doing numbers like that for maybe like a year, but it was only until I actually did a rebrand of my company and really went hard on the marketing and a new website and new technology and a new model when it really started to take off. And that was back in February. So literally a year ago today is when we did the rebrand. Would you mind sharing the most amount of money that your business has made in one day? Multiple six figures in a day. That's a lot of money. <laughs> this would regularly happen on something maybe like a, for example, Black Friday. And after our interview, we decided to check out Sean's matching G-Wagon and Lambo. What did this car mean to you? So you've bought a Lambo. When did you buy this Lambo? Last October. October. I brought it actually the same month that I got my G-Wagon. So I took a big, big little salary kind of like um, that month and I managed to get both cars. So you bought both of those cars in the same month? Both cars were close to about half a million dollars I paid on that month for them. So after making more money, was there like a, a point that you reached where you maybe thought, okay, this is good enough. I'm happy with this, but it looks like to me, if we take it back to the start of the video, you wanted to be like that guy on Instagram. You've gone well past that now. What's the new objective now? Being able to create something that's world changing and that's able to help. I just want to go above and beyond and really create something that can leave a dent in the world and say, look, this is this is who Sean Bainton was. You want that legacy? The legacly, yeah, that's what that's exactly legacy. it. But what would you say to the people out there who are trying to make it themselves? They're getting into the game, they're not sure what to do, they see so much advice online, but they don't know what to listen to. What should they listen to? You just gotta not be afraid to fail and not be afraid to try new businesses and new things. It's so rare for somebody to do their first, second or third business and become successful and become, you know, profitable in a way. So many of these entrepreneurs that you see, it's their 10th, it's their 15th business before they actually got to the point they wanna be. So, you know, you might have tried something and you might have failed and it might have upset you and disheartened you and maybe scared to try something new, but just keep going because it's a numbers game. Eventually you are gonna get there. Eventually you're gonna find that thing that works for you. Perfect, well, been an absolute pleasure shooting with you, bro. Close to the shoot, on to the next one.